The Aid for Trade Initiative is part of ensuring that developing and least developed countries who have been so hard hit by the pandemic, by the consequences of the war in Ukraine, by climate change, that they benefit from the multilateral trading system. Sustainable development, digital connectivity, and women's economic empowerment. For me, this is where trade is going for the future. This is the future of trade, looking at these areas. The money is there. It exists in the world. We must decide to use it for the benefit of all of us. The industrialized world is spending trillions, not billions, trillions to support their economy. Developing countries cannot do this themselves. They need so much more global solidarity. The sustainable expansion of global trade and investment is one of the most important drivers of further economic development, better international relations, and a lifting of living standards all around the world. Indeed, this is precisely what Aid for Trade aims to do. Aid for Trade is about making trade happen. At the end of the day, as DG always says as well, it's about people. And if it doesn't translate into helping people, then everything we're doing in this building comes to naught. We doubt the Aid for Trade concept, which we can equally call Aid for Development, because trade drives development. Mm -hmm. uh, we doubt that the ability to recover the ability to generate resilience is not going to occur. Without adequate and affordable finance, there is no way you can advance either the development or deployment of uh, activity that can even allow trade. We have to make sure that our role as a development bank is to stand by our member countries, especially the least developed ones. Our major concern is actually to keep you know, things running, as you say, to keep the uh, trade flow going, to uh, make countries more resilient. Since the launch of the initiative in 2006, some $556 billion have been disbursed by all donors, that is development banks and bilateral donor countries. We must ask ourselves, is this enough? Is it making the right impact at a time when developing countries are in tight financial straits, under debt distress, severe inflationary pressures, with the world teetering on the verge of a, a recession? My message to everybody is, if you need help, step forward and ask for it early so we can work also on, your, on policies that are appropriate for this moment. We are walking a very narrow path to avoid the recession. Well, if we walk it together, it's like crossing a mountain top. If we walk in line and we walk in coordination step by step together, we can pass. If we don't do that, uh, the outcome would be clear. There would be much more pain uh, for it countries. We talk a lot about the importance of openness of trade. Uh, countries need to uh, open up their trading system, uh, economy, uh, reduce the barriers. Yes, that's that's the kind of the uh, standard uh, trade and uh, uh, growth story. But for developing countries, uh, they need to be uh, supported to be able to be uh, reaching that competitive uh, ability. This conference is not just about cotton, it's about people. We'll be looking at how best to enable least developed countries to use cotton production, processing and trade to drive growth, create jobs and reduce poverty. I feel really qualified to talk about cotton <laughs> because that's what I wear every day. And I wear... <laughs> You know, and, and it's all cotton made on the continent. I don't really understand why we, uh, we are not really moving up the, the value chain and making these garments all the way and other products and really exporting them. Le coton est un secteur 
stratégique qui représente plus de 40% des revenus d'exportation des pays du C4 et jusqu'à 70% des revenus agricoles d'exportation. Au-delà du C4, le coton représente un enjeu économique et social considérable pour toute l'Afrique. Les partenaires au développement jouent un rôle essentiel dans nos capacités à développer notre production du coton, à améliorer sa qualité et à faire en sorte de transformer notre production brute pour en faire des produits finis de plus haute valeur ajoutée, pouvant être ensuite exportés dans divers marchés. Et c'est de cette façon que nous pouvons tirer les meilleurs bénéfices pour nos populations en termes de création d'emplois, de transformation structurelle et de développement durable. We can do it and I'd really like the donors to think about uh, what will be required to make this work. the 12th ministerial conference, WTO members adopted a new agreement on fishery subsidies. The agreement is the first broadly focused binding multilateral agreement on ocean sustainability. For developing country and LDC members, implementation will take time, effort, and money. For these members, the agreement provides for implementation support via technical assistance and capacity building, including through creation of a voluntary WTO funding mechanism. The fund will operate to fill gaps in existing assistance and thus ensure that beneficiaries have what they need to fully implement the agreement. Identifying overfished stocks can be particularly costly. Many of our least developing country fisheries are multi-species and data poor, which requires approaches tailored to the circumstances of each fishery including less costly methodologies. Supporting data infrastructure and connectivity for the fisheries ecosystem in our countries will certainly require a technical assistance. We have within the WTO a considerable number of resources to help our members to enter this agreement into force as soon as possible. We don't have to wait for the establishment of the fund in order to provide that assistance. We have the wind at our back with multilateralism and the value of consensus-based negotiations absolutely reinforced. We're in a very strong position now to move forward.